Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Talapakan po natin ang Panginoon. Ayan. Kung gano'n man po kainit ang sikat ng araw, gano'n mas mainit ang pag-ibig ng Panginoon na umaapaw sa bawat isa. Di po ba? Amen. Uh, sa pag-umpisa po natin, batiin po natin ang nakatabi natin ng masaya ako na narito ka. Amen. Praise God. Tapos, siguraduhin nyo, genuine, sabihin nyo, totoo ba? Medyo. <laughs> Genuine yan by faith. By faith. Kahit hindi ka sigurado, si Lord ang sisigurado. Let's all rise as we open in a word of prayer. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah. Ama naming Diyos na tunay na makapangyarihan sa lahat. Patawad po sa umpisa pa lang, Lord God. Patawad sa mga sandaling nakakalimutan namin na ikaw yun. Na ikaw nga ang makapangyarihan. situation of our hearts, no matter what the situation of our, that surrounds us, Panginoon, you deserve all glory, honor, and praise. So this day, Lord, we pray that by the work of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, we are indeed prepared, we are invigorated, we are empowered to give you the praise that you deserve. May you use our body, our lips, our voices, our lungs, Lord God, na magbigay ng papuri na karapat dapat sa iyo, Lord God. Hayaan po, hindi mo na sa lahat pa po ng pahabol pa po rito, Father God, na aming mga kapatid ay agabayan niyo rin po sila. Father, give them God's speed, Lord God, to be here with us as we worship and praise you and listen to your word together. Lord, we pray, I, I speak blessing, Father God, to all that is here, Lord God, from the most senior to the most junior, Lord God, the youngest, Lord God, and all the ministers who will be ministering today, especially, Father God, our senior pastor, Father God, who will be preaching. We pray for your continuing anointing hindi lang sa messenger, pati sa mga receiver, Lord God, sa mga makikinig ang iyong banal na spirit o siyang mangusa. Dahil it's only through your spirit that we receive the word of the spirit. Sa iyo lahat ng papulit, pasasalamat na pong aming sangot na langit. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone will say, Amen. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Ayan, isang mapagpalang hapon po muli sa bawat isa. So muli po ay bigyan po natin ng palakpak ang ating buhay na Diyos. Amen. So nakakatawa po na tayo po yung nag-gather ngayon to, to glorify our Lord. Amen po ba? So mayroon lang po ang question. Hindi po ako mag-preach, Pastor. Ano lang po, sino po dito yung may mga dinadalang problema, ganyan. Meron pong laban sa buhay. Taas po ang kamay. Ako lang po, ayan, amen. So, kapag daw po pala tayo ay may laban sa buhay, ano daw po ba dapat ang ating response dito? Bukod po sa manalangin. Worship po, ayan. So, through worship po ay kailangan nandun po yung ating power and boldness sa paglaban natin sa ating mga problema. Amen po ba? In the Bible po, share ko lang po, no? In the Bible po, meron pong king, si King Jehoshaphat. Meron po siyang ginawang strategy na, of course, galing po ito sa Panginoon. So, in the time ng kanilang battle, sila po ay nanalangin. And then, on the day po ng kanilang battle, ano po yung pinang front ni King Jehoshaphat? 
Worshippers, tama po yun. So, worshippers. Sino po ba mga worshippers dito ng Panginoon? Amen! Amen. Hallelujah! Sa pag-worship naman po sa Panginoon, wala naman po yan sa tono. Kung ano pang tono yan, meron po tayo sa pagsayaw, ano pong step yan. Basta po para sa Panginoon, yan po ay the best. Amen po ba? So, ang maganda, ang maganda po sa kwento na ito ni King Jehoshaphat po, they won the battle na worship lang po yung ginawa nila. Amen po ba? So, sa pag-worship lang po pala, sabi po ng isang kanta, we can break every chain, mga kapatid. Sa pag-worship po pala, we can break every chain. Lahat po ng dinadala natin is either sickness and illness, poverty, um, unforgiveness. We can break it through our worship, mga kapatid. So, for this day, let us give our best worship sa Panginoon. Amen po ba? Hallelujah. So let's, let's all uh, have, uh, give praise and thanks to ating Panginoon. Amen po. Hallelujah.
going to do a lot of dancing too. So I want to see those hands. Clap for joy. Come on, come on, let's sing. Let's well, I've got a river. A fountain that never will run dry. Amen. It's an open heaven joy releasing, and we will never be denied. Cause we're still in up. Cause we're still in up deep, deep wells. We're still in up deep, deep waters. We're gonna dance in the river. Dance in the river. Cause we're still in up deep, deep wells. We're still in our deep, deep water. We're gonna jump in the river. Jump in the river. Come on, Jonathan. Deep rise out, deep rise out, deep rise out, deep rise out. Deep rise out. We cry out, we cry out to you, Jesus. And I've got a river for me. Cause we're still in our deep, deep wells. We're still in our deep, deep waters. We're gonna dance in the river. Oh no, dance in the river. Cause we're still in our deep, deep wells. We're still in our deep, deep waters. We're gonna jump in the river. Jump in the river. Everybody sing now. Deep rise out. Deep rise out.
sasabi namin, Panginoon. What is there to say, Father, when we are in the presence of greatness, O oh God? Where we are in the presence of the Almighty, the Creator of the heaven and earth. When we are in the presence of the wisdom, Lord. Nothing can be said, Father. Please receive, O oh God, ang aming pagpapasalamat, ang aming mga pagpupuri na nagmumula sa aming mga puso, Panginoon, O oh God. Words fail us, O oh God. But Father, from our hearts, receive, Father, our worship. Receive our gratitude, Father. Thank you, Father, God. Glory and honor is yours, Father. Holy Spirit, we pray. Continue to lead us, to teach us. We pray, Lord, that we will know the Father even more. At sa pamamagitan ng Panginoon, lalo ka namin maitaas, maitanghal, madakila, O Diyos. Sa iyo po ang aming pagpapasalamat at pagpupuri sa matamis na pangalan ni Jesus. Amen at amen at amen. Samahan po niyo ako sa pagbabasa ng ating... Kung may mga Bibles po kayo, parang nagluluko yung ating... Kung ano man yan, maybe you can just, you know, prepare with your Bibles, whether it's in print or in your phone. Our scripture... Uh, are taken from Luke 22, 31 until 34. Basahin po natin. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. There, let's go to Luke 54, uh, 22, 54 to 62. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at the distance. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight she looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I do not know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You are also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I do not know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Praise be to the Lord. To the reading of his word, makakaupo po ang bawat isa. When we look at the great men of God, we talk about Abraham, we talk about Moses, we talk about David, and we talk about all the other great men. They all had great faith. They all had great things that they had accomplished for the Lord. But there is also one thing, in co- that, one thing that they have in common, all of them. They also failed. They are the same in their faith, and they are also the same in their failing. Lahat po ng tao ay kristyano man o hindi. Ito po ay nabibigo, at ito po ay nahuhulog, ito po ay nagkakamali. Ang tanong po eh, ano daw ang pinagkaiba ng martilyo sa tissue paper? Siyempre, yung isa matigas, yung isa malambot. 
Pero ang isang malaking pinagkaiba ng martilyo sa tissue paper ay eh, yung martilyo is used to build. A hammer is used to build. It is used to tear down also, but that is not the real purpose of a hammer. The real purpose of a hammer is to build something. But a tissue paper is something to fix a problem. If we did not have any problems, if we did not spill drinks, if we did not have to sneeze, the tissue paper would not be invented. The tissue paper is invented because we make mistakes. Tama po ba? We fail. And in the Bible, great men fell, failed greatly. David, alam po natin yung failure niya. He committed adultery and, and murder. And then we also see the failure of uh, Abraham where he lied about his wife two times. We also see the failure of Moses. Ang sabi ng Lord kay Moses, kausapin mo yung bato para lumabas ang tubig. Sa inis lang ni Moses, hinampas niya yung bato. And because of that, he was not able to enter the promised land. Today, we're going to look at one of the biggest failures in all the Bible, in my estimation. Ito po yung pinakamalaking failure ng kahit na sino man na nasa Biblia. Ito po yung failure ni Peter. Alam po natin yun, di po ba? Okay. At uh, doon po sa kanyang failure ay magkakaroon po tayo ng pagkakaunawa. In fact, we will be talking about failure for the, three, for the next three weeks. Okay, today we're going to be looking at an autopsy. We'll be trying to examine the failure of Peter. Okay, so sa verse 22, uh, sa verse 31, ito po ang sabi ni Lord. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. We're taking the, the, the setting of the, of the preaching of Pastor Mandy last week. He preached and the setting was the Last Supper. Ito rin yun. This is the same setting this is the same context. And in that supper, it was a dinner. At uh, habang sila ay nagdi-dinner, again, nagkaroon na naman ng usapan, ng diskusyon among the apostles, who, whether who is the greatest among them. And after that discussion, Jesus connects this statement right after that discussion, and he tells Simon, 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 Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. Probably katabi niya si Simon siguro. At ang isang, ano dito, pagkat na nakita natin yung sift you as wheat, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng sift you as wheat? Okay? Hindi po maliwanag kung how did the Israelites sifted wheat, but what we understand here is kung paano po tayo, yung palay po ba? Di ba? Youth, nasan po kayo? Taas ang kamay. Youth, youth. Ayan. I-google nyo na lang, ha? The rice, the rice plant is called palay, and then the fruit is called palay also. And when you gather that, pagka ginather mo na yung palay, hindi mo naman maisasaing ka agad yun, di ba? Dahil, because the rice, the, the rice grain is covered in a thick husk. And this is not edible. You cannot eat this. It's very hard. It's called uh, chaff. Sa ingles or husk. Sa Tagalog, ipa. Okay? Or new word para sa inyo, ipa. And you cannot separate the grain from the husk without force. You need force to separate the grain from the husk. Hindi mo yan makukuha sa pagbababad. Hindi mo yan pwedeng hindi. You need four. So, binabayo po yan. It is pounded in a big mortar and pastel and, you know, people take turns and then they beat this, the, the rice grain until the husk separates from the grain. And after this is separated, they put this in a, anong tawag doon? Bilao. Yan. Google nyo na lang. What is bilao? And they go this way. And let the wind blow away the shaft, and then the grain, which is even heavier, will fall down on the bilao. And that is the way you get your rice. Okay? Na addicted kami ni Pastor Dan sa rice. But when you say you sift wheat, 
It is the same process wherein there is a big pressure that is applied on the wheat so that the husk can be separated from the grain. So when Jesus says that Simon, Satan, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, Jesus is telling him that a great pressure, a great challenge, a great trial, something very painful is coming your way. And you are going to be put under this situation wherein there is a great pressure and this pressure will separate you. It is going to remove your chaff and it is going to expose what is really in you. Magkakaalamanan na kung ano talaga ang nasa puso mo. Kaya ang tawag niya dito, hindi niya tinawag na Peter, ang tawag niya Simon. Simon. He didn't use Petro. He didn't use Peter. The, ch- the name that he had given him to, to denote that he was a rock. A hard, immovable rock. He didn't use that. He used his human name because he is going to go through a very human challenge and it is going to expose his humanity, good or bad. You're going to be sifted like wheat. Who is going to do it? Satan. Satan is going to sift you as wheat. By the way, yung you po dyan ay plural. It's not only Peter, it's every one of them. But he is talking to Peter because he is the leader and he is the representative of the whole group. And there is a special kind of sifting that only Peter is going to go through. The rest of them, yes, they are going to fail. Tatakbo po silang lahat. Pero si Peter, meron siyang special na dadaanan. Sift you as sweet. Ang tanong, Pastor, bakit nandyan si Satan? Okay? Ang sagot po dyan, next week po, huwag po kayong mag absent ang pag-uusapan po natin si Satan. Okay? Kasi malaki yung kamay ni Satanas po dito sa, sa pangyayaring ito. At pag-uusapan po natin siya. Pero ang makikita po natin ngayon, He's going to sift you, every one of them, like wheat. At lalabas po kung ano talaga ang mga nasa sa loobin nila. At makikita natin na paglabas yung katotohanan ay hindi maganda. Napakahirap nun. Kaya ang sabi ng, ng verse 32, But I have prayed for you, Satan, that your faith may not fail. Ano na? Simon, sorry. Magka-S kasi eh. But I have prayed for you, Simon. Funny, no? Pagpe-pray mo si Satanas. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. Bakit? Kasi, kasi Simon, dito sa dadaanan mo, pwedeng mag-fail ang faith mo. Dadaan ka sa isang napakahirap. Kayong lahat, dadaan kayo sa napakahirap. At pwede kayong bumigay. Pwede kayong mag-walk away. Pwede kayong, Lord, ayaw ko na. Lord, masyadong mahirap. Lord, hindi ko inaasahan to. Pwedeng pumalya. Pwedeng bumigay yung pananampalataya nyo. Pero sabi ni Lord, pinag-pray na kita. Pinag-pray na kita. Dadaan ka doon, anak. Dadaan ka, napakahirap. Halos ikamatay mo. Pero alam mo, Pinanalangin na kita. At ang sabi po niya, when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Babalik ka, Pedro. Babalik ka, Simon. Okay? Para kang mamamatay, pero babalik ka. At alam mo, napakalaki ng kumpiyansa ko sa'yo, napakalaki ng pagmamahal ko sa'yo, hindi ka pa bumabalik, binibigyan na kita ng trabaho. Anong trabaho mo? Palakasin mo yung mga kapatid mo. Strengthen your brothers. Strengthen your brothers. Di ba? Pagka mga magulang na, tayong mga magulang, taas mo kami mga magulang. Ayan. Yung iba, hindi pa magulang, magulang na. Di ba? Ah, hindi pa. 
Tayong mga magulang minsan ano tayo eh no pag nga nagsasalita tayo may threat lagi eh no. Oh, pagkayan. Mm. Di ba? Pagkayan. Mm. Nako sinasabi ko sa iyo. Makikita mo ang hindi mo nakikita. Sabi ko sa anak ko, sinasabi ko na nga ba eh. Sabi ko na nga, sabi naman ng anak ko, wala ka namang sinabi. Pero si Lord, sabi niya, hindi, babalik ka. Pagbalik mo, palakasin mo yung mga kapatid mo. Kasi kayo lahat, dadaan kayo sa napakahirap. At marami sa inyo, marami sa inyo, lupasay. Marami sa inyo, warat. At kailangan ng isa na magtatayo sa kanila. Verse 33. Hindi nakuha ni Peter yung sinasabi ni Lord. Na, may nakausap na ba kayong gano'n na seryoso yung sinasabi mo pagkatapos eh parang parang wala lang. Diba? Parang mas, mas believe siya dun sa magagawa niya. Diba? Anak, alam mo, magkaka-brown out. Okay? Ihanda mo yung mga kandila. Alam oh, na, alam ko na, alam ko na. Boom! Namatay si Tunga. Asan nga ba yun? Hindi kasi nakikinig. Ganon si Peter. Sabi ni Lord, yabong eh. Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Okay? Dadaan ka sa napakalaking pagsubok, Pedro. Pinanalangin na ka na. Sabi, parang sinabi ni Peter na, huwag ka mag-alala, Lord. Kahit kulungan, kamatayan, hindi kita iiwan, Lord. Yeah. Hindi niya nakuha. Kaya binabasa ni Lord. Sabi ni Lord, 33. But, nakikita niyo ba yung but? Ang daming but. Okay? Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Kaya sabi ni Lord, but, but, uh, Lord, but, but, he replied, Lord, I'm going to, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. 34, Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, Pansin ninyo, ginamit na niya ang Peter. Kanina, Simon. Ngayon, Peter. Parang sinasabi niya, bato. Binalik niya yung pangalan niya. Alam mo, bato. <laughs> Hindi si Dela Rosa. <laughs> sinasabi ko sa iyo, bato. Bago tumilaok ang manok sa araw na ito, tatlong beses mo akong itatanggi na kilala mo ako. Before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. Parang sinasabi ni Lord, handa kang sumanod sa akin sa kulungan. Handa kang mamatay kasama ko. Itatanggi mo nga ako eh. Hindi bukas ngayong araw na to. Bago titilaw kang manok, sinasabi ko sa'yo, tatlong beses mo akong itatanggi. Hindi minsan, hindi dalawa, tatlo. Handa ka palang mamatay ha? Yung pangalang tao pa lang nahaharapin mo eh, itatanggi mo na ako pa paano pa pag 45 na. Nagkakaano man po ba tayo? At nangyari ang sinabi ng Panginoon. Kaya makikita po natin sa Luke 22, 54 to 62, Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Sino po ito si Jesus? So, kinuha na po si Jesus, natapos na po siyang halikan ni, Pe, ni, ni Judas, kinuha na po siya, dinala po siya. Hindi sa, hindi sa selda, hindi, hindi, hindi pulis, dinala po siya doon sa bahay ng high priest. Pero si Peter matapang. Peter followed at a distance. So, sinusundan niya. At kung babasahin po natin yung John chapter 21 at saka 22, kasama si John na sumusunod. Hindi lang si Peter sunod, kasama niya si John. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. So sino po ito? Ito yung mga, mga nagtatrabaho dun sa bahay ng high priest. Okay? Eh, sabi siguro nila, nako, magdamagan tong usapang to. Magtatrabaho tayo, magdamag. Sige, maggawa na tayo ng apoy dyan. At, at sumama si Peter, kasama nila. Peter sat down with them. Verse 56, A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him, 
and said, this man was with him. So nakaupo si Peter. Siyempre, imagine niyo madilim. Isa lang ang ilaw, yung apoy na nasa harap nila. Sabi mo, babae. Tapos sabi niya sa mga tao, kasama ito. Ito, kasama. Hindi niya sinabi, boy, kasama ka. Hindi. Sinabi niya mga tao, kasama to. At anong sabi ni Peter? Heto na yung una. But he denied it. Woman, I do not know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You are also one of them. You also are one of them. Man, I am not. E si Matthew, concerned siya sa oras. About an hour later. Okay, so mahaba, nakaupo po silang doon, matagal. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Sabi ni John sa chapter 22, kamag-anak daw ito nung naputo na nataga yung, yung tenga. Peter replied, Man, I do not know what you're talking about. Sabi ni John, doon naman sa 22, nagmura pa si Peter. Hindi lang siya nagtanggi, nagmura pa. Lalabas yung nasa luloob. Amen po ba? Lalabas yung nasa loob. Liligliging ka. Dadaan ka sa mahirap at lalabas yung tunay na nasa puso mo. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Hindi natin alam ang layout. Siguro nasa, nasa, surely nasa labas sila. Si Jesus nasa loob, ini-interrogate siya. At malamang merong bintana siguro. At nung pagkakasabi ni Peter, nasabi niya, hindi ko kilala yan. Nag, nagtagpo yung... yung mga, may yung mga girlfriend dito, di ba? Ganyan. Kahit malayo kayo, nagtatagpo ang iyong paningin. Ganun. Kahit malayo sila, nagtagpo yung paningin nila. At nagkita sila mata sa mata, nakita ni Lord, nakita ni Peter si Lord, nakita niya ang mata niya, nakita niya ang mukha niya. At anong nagsa, ang nangyari? The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Hindi po natin alam kung ano yung itsura ng mukha ni Lord nung makita ni Peter. Ewan ko. Pero yung pagtingin niyang yun, Peter broke down. He broke down. Walang excuse, walang keme, wala lang. Walang, walang masabi, walang depensa. And he went out and he wept bitterly. Amen? Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. Masakit, mahirap, lalabas ang nasa loob. I-expose yung nasa puso mo. At ito si Peter, na-expose kung sino siya. Na-expose ang kanyang kahinaan. Na-expose ang kanyang kakulangan. Yung kanyang katapangan, yung kanyang kalakasan. Biglang gumuho. Ano, at ano ang nakita natin? Ang nakita, nakakita, nakakita po tayo ng isang taong matapang. Ngunit mata, natatakot din. At bumigay. So bakit nag-fail si Peter? Luke 22:33. But he replied, "Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Confidence in the flesh. Confidence in himself. Hindi confidence sa Panginoon. Kundi confidence sa sarili niya, Lord, ready ako. Kaya ko. Kahit saan. Hindi kita iiwan." Bakit siya nag-fail? Confidence in the flesh. Number two, Luke 22, 45 to 46, nung nagpe-pray na po si Lord sa Gethsemane, ito po ang sabi, When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? 
He asked them, Jesus asked them, get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Why did he fall? Kulang sa prayer. Kapatid, huwag po nating imenos yung kapangyarihan ng prayer. Ulit-ulit po natin ito. Ulit-ulit. Huwag po nating kakalimutan ang, kap- ang kahalagahan ng pananalangin. Maraming, alam ko, marami sa atin frustrated. Parang, Lord, pastor, nanalangin lang ako, parang wala namang nangyari. Hindi. Hindi. May nangyari dun. May nangyari dun. Feeling mo eh, pastor, pinagpawisan lang ako. Hindi. May nangyari dun. May kalakasan na nangyayari sa ating spirito. Hindi po natin nararamdaman, pero may nangyari. At yung kakulangan ng, pananam, ng pananalangin na uuwi po sa pagkakahulog. Bakit sa nahulog? Why did Peter fall? Didn't pray. Lack of prayer. The time that he should have been praying, he was sleeping. Gusto ko sanang sabihin, tingnan mo yung katabi mo, sabihin mo sa kanya, huwag ka matutulog. Pero sa kanya muna. Sabihin nyo nila sa mga sarili nyo. Ito pa, Luke 22, 54-57. What? But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I do not know him, he said. This is a picture of a brave man. That when he saw his master arrested by the guards, he took out a sword and tried to defend him. So much so that he cut off a, a man's ears. And when they had taken his master, he didn't, he didn't stay where he was. He followed him at a distance. And even went into the courtyard of the man who was persecuting his master. But when it was time to stand up for Jesus, he was afraid of people. Pagka ispadahan lang, kaya ko. Pagka brasuhan, kaya ko. Pero pagka yung sasabihin na ng mga tao tungkol sa akin, ah, mahirap na yun. Makakancel ako sa social media. Hindi na. Wag na. Pagtatawanan ako, hindi na. Makipagsuntukan na lang ako kaysa pagtawanan ako. Nagkakaunawan po ba tayo? May mga kamag-anak po akong mga sundalo. At nagtrabaho din ako sa kasundaluhan. Makakakita ka dyan ng mga taong nakapatay na, na ilang engkwentro na. Pero pagka nanligaw, pero pagka humarap sa harap ng tao, Ibang usapan. Nagkakaon naman po ba tayo? Different fears. Different fears. You may be strong on one side, but when it comes to public opinion, we are all scared. We are all afraid. And Peter was no different. He feared being ridiculed by the people around him on that fireside. Small group of people. Ang sabi pa nga nung isang commentator, servant girl lang, natakot na. This was just a servant girl. And in that society at that time, the servants and the women were the lowest in society. But Peter was intimidated. Takot po tayo sa tao. So bakit po? Bakit po nag, nag-fall si Peter? It's because of his own weakness. Hindi tayo pinababagsak ng Diyos, pero nagkaka-problema po tayo sa ating sariling mga kahinaan. Confidence in himself, lack of prayer, and fear of ridicule. So, truth number one. Failures in our walk with Christ are because of our own weaknesses. Okay? Wala po tayong dapat sisihin. May mga weaknesses po tayo. At kaya nga po tayo pinalalago ng Panginoon. Amen po ba? Kaya tayo pinalalago ng Panginoon. Marami tayo witness. Okay. Kaya tigilan na natin ang mga kayabangan natin. Kaya po ang sabi ni James, wala po dyan. 
Ito po ang sabi ni James. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. When you are tested by God, He has a purpose. He wants to develop perseverance in you and me. Why perseverance? Verse 4, perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete. We are not complete. We are not mature. And the way that the Lord develops us is through trials. He wants us to develop perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that it, you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Truth number two, our failures are our responsibility. Okay? Hindi ka pwedeng magturo. Luke 22, 60 to 62, Peter replied, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter, and Peter remembered the words of the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. He took the responsibility. When the Lord looked at him, we don't know how Peter looked back at the Lord. We don't know the reaction of the Lord. But Peter did not say, Hindi. Hindi ganun. Walang ganun. Walang ganun. Siguro yung pagtingin ni Lord sa kanya, basag si Peter kagad eh. Yung tingin pa lang, pagsak. Tingin pa lang. Sarap sana kung gano'n ka makatingin sa anak mo, no? Makakuha ka sa isang tingin. Si Peter, pagtingin, wala na. No defense. All he could do, maybe he walked outside. Broken man. How would a broken man walk? But he walked outside, maybe he was rushing because he didn't want people to see him weak. He rushed outside and probably went into a dark corner and he just cried his heart out. His responsibility. God doesn't make a sin and Satan cannot make a sin. Hindi po kalooban ng Diyos na tayo po ay magkasala. Ang Diyos po ay banal. Amen po ba? Ang Diyos po ay banal. Eh, Pastor, di ba, sabi ni Lord, eh, ano, di ba? Di ba, Pastor, kalooban ni Lord yun? Kasi pinopresay niya. Eh, pinagpray nga niyang hindi mangyari. Eh. So, kasalanan po natin yun. Responsibilidad po natin yun. Kaya ito po ang sabi ni James. When tempted, no one should, James 1, 13 to 14, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. We cannot say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does He tempt anyone. God does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when, by his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. Kasalanan po natin. Marami tayong pwedeng ituro. Eh kasi si Satanas, eh kasi ganun dun, eh kasi... Hindi. Tayo lang po yun. Truth number three. God has prepared for our failures. Alam ni Lord, hindi hindi po nagulat, hindi po nagulat si Lord. Sabi ni Lord, but but I have prayed for you Simon that your faith will not fail and when you have turned back strengthen your brothers. At pagkatapos dun sa kwento ni Mark nung ipinako na namatay na si Lord at yung araw ng muling pagkabuhay yung Easter Sunday Pumunta po yung mga kababaihan doon sa tomb ng Panginoong Jesus at hindi na, as usual, nang hindi nila nakita ang bangkay ng Panginoon. Anong nakita nila? Nakakita sila ng angel. Ito ang sabi ng angel. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he has told you. Special mention. Sino? Si Peter. Imagine mo ang dating nun kay Peter nung ibinalita ng mga babae sa kanya. Peter, 
Nakita namin, sabi ng angel, wala yung bangkay ni Lord. Sabi ng angel, punta daw kayo sa Galilee. Nandudu na kayo daw. At Peter, sinabi niya, pa ikaw daw, pinangalanan ka, Peter. <sighs> Sarap. All the while, si Peter, iniisip niya, naku, di ba, ewan ko kung, ewan ko kung gaano katagal umiyak si Pedro. Ewan ko kung gaano sa katagal na warat at basag. Hindi natin alam kung gaano katagal yon pero dumating yung balit. Siguro habang ganun siya, iniisip niya, galit si Lord sa akin, wala na akong kwenta. At pagdating ng balita, Peter, pinangalanan ka ni Lord. Huwag punta ka daw ng Galilee. Kayo, kasama ka. Alam ni Lord, Nakahanda po si Lord. Hindi po natin sinasabi na, sige, magkamali tayo, andyan naman si Lord. Hindi. Pero alam po ng Lord. Early on the first day of John 20, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. And we know the story. It was John and Peter who were, who were running ahead of everyone. And then P- and John, probably because he was the younger one, he overtook Peter and he got into the tomb first. But he didn't enter. While he was standing at the entrance, it was Peter who entered. I mean, Lord, alam ko, when you have turned back, I have prayed for you. When you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And we know Acts chapter 2, when the church was born. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowds. And 3,000 were born again. This was the broken Peter. The Peter who was sifted like wheat by Satan. Wala po ito sa slides. Ito po ang sabi ng Romans. 828, alam na alam po natin ito. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. In all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. God works in all things. My God works for my good. Your God works for your good. In all things, the good and the bad. God has the power to make it a blessing for you and me. Application number one. Failures in our walk with Christ are because of our weaknesses, so rely on His Spirit. Let's rely on our Spirit. The world tells us to be independent. The Bible does not tell us that. The Bible tells us to be, independ- to be dependent on God. The Bible, the world tells us, grow up, be a man. The Bible tells us, be like a child. Because a child will always depend on his father. Number two, failures are our responsibility. Accept the consequences. There are consequences. Accept them. Accept them. Good thing is, the consequences will not kill you. The consequences will build you. Why? Because my God makes everything work together for good. Don't dodge the consequence. Huwag mong ilagan. Huwag mong ibigay sa iba. Huwag kang magtuturo. No. Take it. Take it. Because when we go through the consequences, God is right there with us. God is right there with us. Jesus is right there with us. Helping us navigate the difficult parts. Number three, and we end with this. God has prepared for your failure, so stick with Him no matter how you feel. Peter must have felt he was going to die. Peter must have hated himself. Siguro si Peter gusto niya iuntok yung ulo niya. Pero alam mo maganda kay Peter, hindi siya umalis. He was right there with them. He didn't leave. He stuck it out with Jesus. 
He stuck it out with Jesus. So stick with Jesus and don't be too hard on yourself. We're not saying that it's okay to commit mistakes. No, we're not saying that. We're saying that, that when we do fall, Jesus is prepared. Stick it out with him. Let's bow our heads. All glory and honor is yours, Father. Father, countless are the times that we have fallen. Countless are the times when we have disappointed you, Lord. Many times, Lord, we knew, we know the right and the, bad, and the wrong way. But we still took the wrong way. Forgive us, Father. Father, I pray, O oh Lord God, for each and every one of us who feels that we have no choice. Father, let your Spirit lead us, O oh God. Let your Spirit guide us, Lord. Then, Father, for those of us who have been, who are broken, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, that you are not surprised by our failure. Thank you, Lord, that you are prepared for our failure. And it is your will, Father, that it will, that you will make it work together for good for us, oh Lord God. We thank you, Father. We give you glory, my Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen and amen. God. And ngayon po dadako tayo sa ating pagbibigay ng handog at ikaw po. May I call on the ushers to start collecting. And as they go around and collect, I would like to encourage you that katulad ng tinuro ni Pastor Butch, sabi doon, mag, ay, ay naisip ko habang nakaw po, magbigay, huwag bibigay. No, no, no. Magbigay tayo sa Panginoon. And don't give up. Continue in the Lord. Continue in His goodwill. Where it says, Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Will be, will be poured out into your lap. For with good measure you use, it will be used. It will be measured to you. Bless the Lord. And habang kinokolekta po natin, we'd like to greet our first-time visitors po. Uh, habang binibat, binabanggit ko po ang inyong pangalan, kung maaari po na tumayo para mabati po kayo ng lahat, si Rogeline Bolu. Welcome po, welcome. Si Rina Nugid, Joy Malyada, Maria Del Villama, Juditha Tokma, and Ronald. Welcome, welcome po. Welcome po. We, we pray that this is your first of many, 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 <laughs> many times of joining us in journeying with the Lord. Ushers, praise God. Let us rise. sa mga pangirian sa lahat itinataas po namin ang mga nag-gather na handog at ikapo 
Lord, we are, we are grateful, Father God, for the opportunity to give you what is yours. Uh, we thank you for our employers, our channels of blessing that you use, Father God, so that we too may be channels of blessing towards you and others. Lord. Bless these treasures. May they be used unto your kingdom and in, in, in widening your ter territory, Lord God. We love you, Lord God. We honor you with all of these. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. At ngayon po, mga kapatid, please be seated for a while before I continue with the rest of the announcements. We will be hearing a uh, special word uh, from Pastor Butch. Magandang hapon po, mga kapatid. Meron po tayong special announcement. And I would like to call on Pastor Blaine Newhouse. He is the chairman of the Common Council of the National Evangelical Church. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus, and uh, I come with a word today that may make us uncomfortable. I realize that uh, disagreement and discord is not something we feel comfortable being a part of. And we may feel sometimes that in the church uh, we shouldn't have disagreement or discord. But to read the New Testament is to be reminded that people are people, and uh, we still struggle with sin, and none of us knows perfectly God's will. And to read the New Testament is to see there how often Christians struggled to be united. God's hope for the church, for the bride of Christ, is that we would be one, that we would be unified in purpose and mission and understanding. But I think the latter is generally the greatest challenge in the church. Uh, we don't understand clearly God's heart. We don't understand clearly one another. And because of that, uh, discord sometimes arises in the church. Discord between believers, discord perhaps between uh, a leader and a congregation or uh, a portion of the congregation. And unfortunately, the church doesn't have a great history of handling that well. Uh, we see time after time churches split. Uh, we say, you know, we're not going to hang in there and try to work at this together. We're not going to pray for and see the best in the other. Uh, we're going to choose to think less of them. We're going to choose to think that they can't be redeemed, that things can't change or be better. Uh, now, I say all of that because of a season that the BCF congregation has been uh, asked to navigate together. And uh, that season, some of you are very aware of and others of you know almost nothing about. And, and that's okay. I don't need to rehash uh, what has happened in the past. But what I want for us to understand together is our commitment as the NEC Pastoral Care Committee uh, to bring about reconciliation. Okay, God's heart is a heart of reconciliation. God's desire is to see people who are at cross purposes uh, to each other find a way to pray for and uh, take the necessary steps uh, to deal with the consequences. Uh, your, your pastor said well this, uh, this afternoon, that our decisions, the choices we make, have consequences. And uh, one of the consequences for your pastor is that the NEC has asked him to share a public apology for decisions that have been made uh, in the recent past that have caused division and hurt and misunderstanding in this body. And this is a difficult thing to do. And I stand next to him, not as one who wishes to judge, but who wishes instead for the journey of reconciliation to continue. Now, for that to happen, we all need to do hard work. Uh, for some of us, it's to believe that uh, God can make a way where there is no way. Uh, you know that there are many brothers and sisters here among you who are at odds one with another. And God is not honored in that. And I cannot give you the perfect template to lay on that discord to heal it. But I can say, more broadly, uh, we are called to take seriously the teaching of Jesus that the church is to be one. And not just in principle, but in practice. 
And so in order for that to happen, when there's discord between husbands and wives, when there's discord between friends, when there's discord between parents and children, generally what begins the process of reconciliation is an apology. Owning the things that I have done, and not to say that Pastor Butch is totally at fault in this situation, we're not suggesting that, but to his credit, Pastor Butch has been asked to own in your presence the things that he has done that has contributed to the discord and disagreement which continues to be a part of the witness of BCF. And again, I, I want you to hear something that you already know. This discord and disagreement does not honor God. It does not enhance your witness. So the hard work that is before us all is to believe that God can make a way where there is no way. And uh, I commend your pastor, even as I turn the mic over to him, uh, for the willingness on his part to own that which he has done to contribute to this. And also there are opportunities for BCF leadership more broadly to take steps to address this present conflict and discord. And so to whatever degree that you can participate in such things, whether it's to pray for your pastor or for those who have been hurt by this process, who are no longer a part of you, uh, I would encourage you to do so. And you alone know what that looks like, what the Holy Spirit is laying on your heart. But I would ask you to take seriously the consequences of not doing that. That means that we're in some way at peace with brothers and sisters who are at odds with one another. And I will say one thing for certain, God is not honored in that. So we can do our part to honor God in our attitude and in our uh, posture toward others. And we can take uh, an example from your pastor as he begins this journey of healing together with us by way of a public apology. Uh. Noong April ng taon po na ito ay umalis po sa simbahan natin sila Pastor Richard Lee at saka si Pastor John Villapando at iba pang mga kapatiran matapos akong mag-announce sa ating worship service noong April 31 at April March 31 at saka April 2 na hindi sila pumirma sa doctrinal stand na pinarma, pinapirmahan ko po sa lahat ng mga pastors. Para po maayos ito, ang National Evangelical Church or NEC ay nagbigay ng ilang mga hakbangin na dapat kong gawin bilang senior pastor at ilan ding gawain para sa CB at pastoral staff. Ang announcement po na ito ay pagtalima sa pinagagawa sa akin ng pastoral committee ng NEC. Ang doctrinal stand na pinirmah pinapirmahan ko po sa mga pastors noong March 30, noong, Mar noong March, ay salungat sa historical na posisyon ng BCF at NEC tungkol sa non-denominationalism. Ang pakahulugan ko po noon, ang kapahulugan ko sa non-denominationalism ay ang pagiging independent ng isang church o ang hindi nito pag-anib sa anumang denominasyon ng mga iglesia tulad ng Methodist, Baptist, or Presbyterian at iba pa. Ngunit ang definition pala ng NEC na huli ko na pong nalaman ay ang paggalang at hindi pag-reject sa anumang katuruan ng ibang mga denominasyon. Ito po ang nalabag ng papirmahin ko ang mga pastors ng doctrinal stand na nagre-reject sa ilang katuruan ng ibang denomination. Dahil po dito ay nagkaroon ng dibisyon sa ating kalagitnaan at humihingi po ako ng kapatawaran ninyo sa sakit na idinulot ng aking aksyon. Nung mag-announce po ako sa ating worship service noong April 2, nasabi ko daw na hindi naniniwala sila Pastor Richard at Pastor John sa Bible. Hindi ko po matandaan kung nasabi ko nga ito. Ganun pa man, humingi na po ako ng kapatawaran sa kanila, kay Pastor Richard at kay Pastor John, at pinatawad na po nila ako. Gusto ko rin pong i-announce sa inyo na pinapirma po ng NEC ang mga pamunuan ng mga member churches ng Memorandum of Non-Denominational Position. Sinasaad po ng dokumentong ito na dapat pangalagaan ng mga member congregations ang pagiging non-denominational. Ito ay ang paggalang at hindi pag-reject sa mga katuruan ng ibang Christian denominations. Pinirmahan po namin, naming mga pastors, pati ng mga CB members, ang memorandum na ito 
at susundin po namin ito. Bilang senior pastor ay hindi po ako magre-reject o magsasalita laban sa mga doktrina ng ibang denominasyon at sisikapin ko pong pangalagaan ang pagiging non-denominational ng BCF sa mga sermon, sa mga pagsusulat, pati sa social media. Dito po, dahil po sa sumalungat sa NEC position, ang pinapirmahan kong doctrinal stand sa mga pastors, inaanyayahan ko po sila Pastor Richard at Pastor John at ibang mga kapatiran na bumalik sa BCF at ipagpatuloy ang paglilingkod sa Panginoong Hesus sa dati nilang ministry. At gaya po ng mga ibang manggagawa, hinihimok ko po silang magbigay ng katiyakan ng pagpapasakop sa pamunuan at alituntunin ng ating simbahan at sa NEC kabilang na ang Memorandum of Non-Denominational Position. Dalawang bagay naman ang pinagagawa ng NEC sa pamunuan ng BCF. Ang una ay ang pagbabalangkas ng mga pastors, elders, deacons, and deaconesses ng mas malinaw na patakaran para mapanatili ang pagiging non-denominational ng BCF at NEC. Ang pangalawa ay ang paggawa ng mas malinaw na patakaran at guidelines sa pag-appoint at pagtanggal ng mga leaders at pastors sa BCF. Ang gagawing patakaran ay dapat nakaayon sa patakaran ng NEC. Salamat po. Yun lang po. So... Sana po eh, hinihiling ko po ang kapatawaran ng bawat isa. At salamat po. The process of reconciliation uh, is not a one-time decision. It's not a one-time apology. It's something that we uh, agree requires a commitment to a journey. And it's a journey of ongoing forgiveness and ongoing uh, faith and a sense that God is at work in the life, perhaps, of a person that's hurt me. Uh, when a church is divided, there's always hurt there. And uh, Satan wants to use that hurt to continue to cause division and discord. We all have an opportunity to push back against the darkness and look to Christ for wisdom to know how to bring people together. And right now you know people who are distant one from another. And you can feel it's the responsibility of the people up here to make that right, and to a degree it is. But you also can respond to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and do what God has laid on your heart to do to bring those who are at a distance from one another together. God's hope for this outcome is that we would be united, that BCF would learn from the pain of this journey and become more useful tools for kingdom service. So I commend your pastor for his uh, vulnerability and, and his willingness to own the part that he played in this outcome, and I would invite all of us to be prayerful and humble in our receiving of the apology and open to what the Holy Spirit has in mind for us personally to do. So before I uh, take my leave from you, I just want to pray for your pastor. So I'm going to pray for him. Lord God, we, we are just uh, taken aback today that the scripture lesson uh, speaks to us about restoration, about uh, the Apostle Peter, one so committed to know and do your will, and yet in a moment of indecision, makes choices that are kind of hard for us to understand unless we put ourselves in the same position and we say, there by the grace of God go I. We've all missed the mark, we've all made poor choices, we've all not led as well as we could, and it's easy for us to throw stones at another or to take some manner of delight in seeing another person struggle. But Lord, we pray that as the church, we would extend compassion and, and grace and patience with one another, that we would uh, live into that which you have invited us to be, that the fruit of the Spirit would be more evident in the midst of our struggles. And Lord, in these struggles, we do not want Satan to gain the victory. We want Christ to be glorified. And so to that end, Lord, we pray that you would show us the path to unity 
you would show us the path to forgiveness, that you would show us the path to righteousness and restoration. Lord, uh, we know that uh, the evil one intends this for a certain outcome, but you can use it for good. So we pray in advance for that outcome and that you would receive the praise, the honor, and the glory. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Ngayon, dadako po tayo sa ating ibang announcements. A reminder po that we will be having a seminar for life group leaders entitled Small Groups, Big Impacts. Um, our speakers there will be Pastor Butch, Pastor Celso, Pastor Poe, and yours truly. This will be held on September 29th and October 6th, both fri Fridays. Yes, both Fridays. 3.15 p.m. to 4.45 at the prayer hall. Yung po yung first floor hall na ginaganap pa ng Kids Church. Ayan po. And patuloy po ang ating call for tambourine dan dancers. And just to inform you that they will have their room relocated to the music room. So the tambourine beginners training dance ministry will be held at the music room at 3.30 to 4.45 p.m. And later on po, uh, later today, at 3.15 to 4.45, we will be having the pastors, elders, deacons, and deaconess P PED meeting at the same hall po, prayer hall, so first floor po. First floor po ng British standard, uh, ground floor, first floor. <laughs> sa Pilipinas po kasi nalito ako eh. Nahanap ko yung second floor, wala na pala. Ayan po. And with that po, maraming salamat po sa... Sa pagdalo, sa mating first-time visitors, uh, may we, we pray na you continue in your journey with Christ as, as long as the Lord wills you to be in Bahrain, ay makasama po namin kayo. And we would like to also thank the sponsors uh, for our food. Ay, hindi na pala i-flash yan. <laughs> Maraming salamat po sa inyong pag-share ng blessing Uh, tandaan po, ang, ang ibig sabihin po ng BCF ay Bahrain Christian Fellowship, hindi Bread Christian Fellowship. Uh, joke lang. Siyad tayong seryoso eh. Pero seryoso talaga yung kanina. In, 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 praise God. May all rise as we close in a word of prayer. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, as Peter was sifted as sweet. Alam ko, many of us have or are experiencing our own version of that, Lord God. In different intensities, Panginoon, sa aming journey ng aming pananampalataya, kami po ay malalagay sa pag-ubok, pagsubok, or makakarating sa mga panahon ng matinding pagsubok. Hayaan niyo pong maalala namin ang mga salita mo dito sa scripture na aming pinag-aralan today na alam niyo po na ang mga harapin namin pagsubok at inahanda niyo na rin po, Father, ang solusyon. We just pray, Panginoon, para sa kalakasan ng pananampalataya, para mag-endure, Lord God, through that sifting. And we know, Father God, na kasama ang iyong banal na spirito, we are already victorious in Christ Jesus. No matter what the situation, Lord God. No matter what that what that pounding na uh, gagawin ng kaaway, Lord God. We will remain resilient because of the Holy Spirit. Because of what Jesus has already done on the cross. And how, because He has already risen from the grave. Panginoon, we continue to thank you for your Holy Spirit's guidance on sa leadership po ng, ng church na ito. We continue to pray, Father God, for blessing sa bawat isa na narito, Lord God. In every sense of the word, Lord God, physically, with good health, Lord God, um, relationally, Father God, as you restore uh, broken relationships, hindi lang, Father God, dito sa church, pero even in their families, Lord God, as you make things new, Panginoon. 
Lord, dalangin din po namin even yung mga difficult financial situations, emotional situations, Lord God, we are walking in victory, Father God, through those things. Because, Father, you are faithful. And because you are faithful, we will depend solely on you, on your power, on your will, on your goodness. Help us to take responsibility for the things that are under our responsibility, Lord God, like our failures, Lord God, like the consequences, Lord God. And we just pray, Lord God, that we live out these truths from this day forward with your Holy Spirit God, strengthening us. Be with us as we partake of our uh, bread and refreshments, Lord God, later on. And may every conversation, Father God, be glorifying to you. May you season our conversations with salt, Lord God. You, but only what builds people up, Lord God. Let we pray, Father God, hanggang sa paglalakbay pa uwi ng bawat isa, for your grace and your mercy to be with everyone. At ngayon po, na kapatid, tanggapin po natin ang pag-ibig ng Diyos Ama, ang patuloy na pagliligtas ng Diyos Anak, at ang paggabay at paglubay ng Diyos Espiritu Santo ay sumatin ngayon at magpakailanman. Amen. Po. Come on church, we are on this together at walang mood or situation para mag-stop natin para tayo magpuri sa ating Panginoon. Amen? Sige po, palakpakan po natin ating Diyos sa buhay at sama-sama po tayong magpuri sa ating Diyos. Amen? Let me see those hands! Let's sing! Like God, a river of living water, a fountain that never will run dry. It's an open heaven, you're releasing, and we will never be denied. Cause we're stirring up, cause we're stirring up deep, deep wells. We're stirring up deep, deep waters We're gonna dance in the river Cause we're stirring up deep, deep wells We're stirring up deep, deep waters We're gonna jump in the river Jump in the river Deep cries out to deep cries out to you Deep cries out to deep cries out to you Deep cries out to deep cries out to you Jesus Deep cries out to deep cries out to you Deep cries out to deep cries out to you Deep cries out to deep cries out to you Jesus Walk If we go to the left, we'll go to the left. And if we go to the right, we'll go to the right. We're gonna jump, 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 jump in the river. Jump, 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 jump. Everybody, if we go to the left, we'll go to the left. And if we go to the right, we'll go to the right. We got. Everybody, if it goes to the left, we will go to the left. If it goes to the right, we will go to the right. We gonna jump, 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 jump in the river. Jump, jump, everybody. If it goes to the left, we will go to the right. We will go to the right. We gonna shout, 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 shout. Come on, deep cry. Deep rise out to deep rise out to you. Deep rise out to deep rise out to you. Deep rise out to deep rise out to you. Deep rise out to deep rise out to you. Deep rise out to deep rise out to you. Deep rise out to deep rise out to you. Deep rise out to deep rise out to you. Deep rise out to deep r